Chapter 7 Move the Rope In a large golden cage, the tribreed grew weary. She continuously tried to send messages to Zack, but had no idea if he was receiving them. One thing she did take notice of was a beautiful glowing gem that Daron liked to look at. She had never seen anything like it before. She'd seen him cupping it in his hands and smile as he gazed at it. He didn't smile much either. It had to be that seeing tear that the Aztrak had given him. She believed he could see places with it, but he never talked. She tried to speak to Zack. She wasn't exactly sure, but so far she believed she was an Orzo. She had only seen Ortsons, but she hadn't seen many either. She knew she must tell them her location. The deal with the centaurs was even more severe. She got another idea. Duran, he put the crystal away and came to her. May I request something of you? I mean, you're not going to kill me, are you? You wouldn't feed me and you haven't harmed me. I may. What is it you want from me? Do you want my powers like you wanted my mother's? He still does. Okay. You have no powers. I'll do as I wish, and if you hadn't forgotten, you got yourself into this. You made it easy to get into the land of the fairy's child. You love my mother, Cheyenne stated. You were going to take her power, though, because something mattered to you more. You say another word about it, and I will kill you. I will get what I want, even if you die. Do not taunt me, love. You do have minimal power that will help me. You are untrained and brave with your words. Tears suddenly rolled down Cheyenne's cheeks, and her heart pounded. She knew she shouldn't have tested him, for he had a sore heart. It was very dangerous to do so. Duran walked silently to the door. He half turned without looking at her. Trillium is the only one I love besides my wife. I cannot force her to love me no matter how powerful I am, not in the ways I wish her to feel. I can pick whichever woman I want in my kingdom, but it's an empty despair. It never measures up because I lost that part of my heart that is her. I would love to get my revenge on her, but she doesn't really matter to me. Not really. Tell me of your request. I want an instrument to play. I want a harp. There are no harps here. Evan was progressively opening his telekinetic powers. It had only been a few days and it was slow progress, but better than none at all. Here, move these things, Evan. Zack placed a feather, a spoon, a cup, and a coil of rope upon the long wooden table. Evan easily blew the feather off and laughed. With hardly any delay, he pushed the spoon off slowly. The cup was heavier, and Evan had to spend more effort focusing. He wrinkled his brow, and then very slowly the cup wobbled. Come on! He tried again with more determination. It wobbled again, and then very slowly began to slide. It took much longer, but eventually he pushed it off. He was relieved and tired. You can do better than that. You have to if you want to hold a candle to me. Cheyenne likes me, you know. Yeah, I know. Evan looked at the rope. It had to weigh a ton. That's really hard. You think you can move it? After the cup, I don't know if I want to. Tough. Move the rope. He took a deep breath and focused again. Just the tip of the rope twitched and stopped. Why is it so hard? Because you haven't learned to open that part of your mind. It takes a lot of control and focus. Move the rope. He tried and the tip of the rope came up about three inches from the table and dropped again. Damn it, it's too hard. I can't do it. You know it's tough, pal. You don't have a choice. Bullshit. Who's your grandfather? Zack asked and Evan gazed at the rope. He lived in Fathia. Not that one. Tolan is my grandfather. Your grandmother's father. My grandmother, Jade's father? Was Derry and Zane, right? Yes, sir. You are the blood from the house of Zane. The royal blood is in you. You're supposed to be the king of Havenbell. You can't let Duran get your scepter, the scepter of your great-grandfather. He will keep Cheyenne as well. Is that what you want? At this, the rope began to uncoil in the air. Five feet of rope levitated upward and held there. His brow was sweating and he could feel nothing but anger. See, Zack is, Zack's telling him the truth. Zack's telling him the truth because he really is the real bloodline. 
but he's also pushing and using his powers on Evan to make Evan fight harder because Zack wants wants him to find Cheyenne. It's like Zack doesn't really want to fight Duran. He just wants to get Cheyenne back. So he's kind of like pushing Evan and he wants Evan to be able to challenge Duran, which is really damn dangerous, but that's kind of true. I'm not going to let that happen. All at once, the entire coil lifted two feet off of the table and held there for five seconds. Evan screamed and the rope fell. Congratulations, your highness. I can't even do that. You know too much, Evan panted. Maybe so. It's hard to do that. Why could I move it when I was angry? Do I have to be mad? No, anger is just a powerful emotion. It makes it easier. You have to harness the control. Keep working on it. What else can you teach me? A great many things. Question is, what do I wish to teach you? Your force control is far stronger than mine. I can move faster than you, but I've never been able to suspend objects. Really? Nope. Each of us is different. We all have our own talents. I am stronger of mind and feeling. Cheyenne can also be strong with the mind connecting ability, but she's weak at it. You know, it gets me, what, that most of the progeny of our powerful wizards are completely untrained. Why is that? Good question. We should have been. Did they think nothing bad was going to happen again? That there would never be another war? Dumb choice. With all of us trained to our potential, we are a much stronger force. What else will you teach me? The ancient language. Boring and hard as well. Next. Not so fast. Duran and the Aztracs use the ancient language. Many spells use it as well. It is important and it would benefit you. You kind of want to find that scepter more than before, don't you? See, he's using his magic to push him. I never wanted to before, but you're right. It really does belong to me. That's the spirit. To her surprise, one day Cheyenne awoke to find a harp in her cage. How silent Duran was not to wake her from her sleep. Every day was a reminder of how powerless she was. She intended to stay on his good side. He could snap her neck in an instant, and that would not stop the wizard from pursuing him. He would still get what he wanted with her without her. She took the surprise as very thoughtful. She knew it took him quite the effort to find a harp in another land and bring it to her. He didn't have to do this, but he did. Maybe he pitied her. Maybe Duran was still part human, meaning he was still part monster. She brushed her hair and tied it back. She moved her chair and ran her fingers across the strings. One thing about Josephera that she did enjoy was playing the harp. She, prefer she performed quite regularly, regularly to the feathers. She was good at it and she enjoyed it. The harp itself was old and by no means beautiful. She imagined she would spend a lot of time tuning it. Ortson's were rough, but much to her astonishment, it was in perfect tune. She was a little out of practice, so she started with the easy song she learned as a child. This harp was harder to play than the one she had at home. By the third song, she had picked up the tempo and was playing smoother now. She could hear someone coming in, for she heard all of the locks on the door being unlocked. Duran entered, looking irritated. He began to look around the room. Cheyenne stopped playing. They can't stand it probably because they don't like anything good. He smiled, but made no comment. Thank you, Duran. Don't thank me. Thank the guy I killed to get it. You like it, don't you? I love it. He cast a golden spell upon the walls of the room and went on the door when he left. Great. I've been soundproofed. Blaine and his army of Adrella went ahead and gathered near the shore. There was no one around. Zack lowered the anchor and all were excited to explore Claire Ann. We need a few feathers and twenty others to stay aboard. You are in no way to surrender my vessel. Die with honor first. Aye, they shouted. Loaded with weapons and supplies, they left the ship in a line. We really don't need all this stuff. The centaur are pretty friendly. Won't they offer us goods? Maybe, maybe not. They walked for miles before they decided to set up camp. They ate and slept, always keeping someone awake for watch. It was a quiet night. They started again in the morning. The land was truly beautiful. It was full of green forests, rivers, and waterfalls. They came through Ainan. Why is it so quiet here? 
Most of the men are probably on this quest. But the women and children? Maybe they went to larger cities for protection, just in case the Ortsons arrived. They began to walk down the road. As they walked, Evan would practice his lifting power by lifting the hanging limbs out of their way and occasionally skipping a rock or two down the road they were traveling. Stop, Zack warned. You're acting like your brother. Save it for when you need it. Yes, teacher. They rested again briefly, and when they started up again, Evan took the lead. Evan, we must go this way, Zack directed, holding his finger out. If we cross through here, we'll save a lot of time. Zack was stumped that Evan knew this at all. The grove of souls will melt their minds, the whole army, trust me. So it would not melt ours? Do you think we could resist it? I? Then let's split up. We'll make it ahead of them. No, we all go the long way. Fine. They traveled down the road, and right before the clearing, Zack bent to one knee and touched the ground with his right arm. What is it? Shh. He whipped his finger before his mouth, and the color fled his face. Secret, steals, sabotage. Draw your weapons, Zack ordered. What's going on? Evan asked while drawing his sword. The hillside were about to be attacked. Upon the hillside came over 100 centaur. You weren't kidding. Shoot them before they reach us. Feathers came from overhead shooting arrows upon them. The elves led the ground line and shot as well. Even though the feathers weren't half as good as shooting as the elves, the air advantage scored them several fatalities. More fell on opposing sides, but now their arrows were starting to reach. Zack watched his troops get stuck in many places. When they get closer, help me pull some weapons. Why don't you just mind screw them? Why don't you just shut up? They were halfway to the clashing point. Three, two, one. This worked far better than expected, for they took the first three rows of their weapons away from them. Then a blessing came. Evan not only suspended them, he turned them and threw them back, almost wiping out the first three rows of them. Zack turned just in time to see an enemy lunge at his friend. Watch out! Zack shouted and sent a beam at the centaur, knocking him down. Evan never moved so fast in his life. He leaped four feet away in an instant. Kill all centaur! Zack sadly realized that he had under half the crew he had before. They were almost upon them now. Garrett, protect us. Evan, Zack, and all that were left attacked the centaur. Arrows were still being shot at them. Garrett threw a pink shield around them, but it wouldn't hold long. What are we going to do? Evan, you're flashing. Calm down. Seeing Zack's eyes frightened him. Zack held his hands out in front of him. They flickered like lightning in the clouds. Come on, Zack, we need to concentrate. The shield won't hold long. Garrett pointed at Evan. You, run and hide now. Confused Evan covered himself with his shield and broke out of the pink bubble with his sword in his hand and headed towards the forest. Garrett and Zack began focusing on the attackers. The shield wore off and they were netted to keep them from flying away. They surrendered. They were chained and placed upon a wagon. Garrett sent a thought to Zack. I'm not taking a bomb with us. Evan wondered what was taking place within him. He had more power than he and Zack had thought. It wasn't much to lean on, for he knew not how to use it or control it. All he knew is that he must follow them at a great distance and try to bust them out of whatever trouble they were headed towards. This was the first real test of his courage, for he was all alone now. Zack was sitting in the wagon with Garrett. He was one of the last large fairies in existence, at least he would be aware of any harm that should come to him. He still had power even if he was almost drained of it. Zack was tempted to look over his shoulder for Evan in the forest, but he resisted. He wasn't sure Evan was strong enough to rescue them, but beggars can't be choosers. Zack began to hear a sweet melody and instantly fell into a trance. He remained silent for a moment. Garrett, he pressed with his mind. Can you hear that? Yes. Do you think anyone else here can hear it? Not anyone here, no. It's Cheyenne. She's calling. She found a way to call me. Good. Do you know where she is? Or so. I'm sure of it. I've been screening these guys. I know what this is all about. Talon approached the head of the council nervously. Before he opened his mouth, Neja stared at him. You wish to speak alone? I. 
Then let's go below. Talon followed him to a private room. I felt something strange the minute we left for sea. It must be you. I only gather tiny thoughts of yours. As disappointed as I am with my son, he can read minds better than I. Yes, sir, your son Zachary. What do you have to tell? You must turn the ship around. I should have told you sooner. What is this business with the horses? Shh, keep it down. All of the centaur on the ship are against you. I could feel deceit. Why would they? They want your winged horses and fairies. They'll do anything for it. They are working with the Ortsons who will give them brew, treasure, and feathers. They will use your son to pull in the others. Duran wants all of you dead. You are only standing in his way. You need to turn the ship around and go to Claran. Nay, but thank you. You're going to chance his death? He won't die, at least not easily. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? Our children are bait to bring us all together to our demise. We are in no way to give it the Pegasus. If we trolley down to Clarion, they will be waiting to attack us. We continue our single mission, and when we land, we must kill all centaur except for you. The horse war has begun. Neja sent two messages using the birds. He sent one to Trillium's ship and one to Fairy Island. He hoped they hadn't gotten too far.